Hello wonderful people, Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and today I'm going to be doing a live review of the new compilation. Well, actually not so new anymore, I would have to say, from Cyclops Recordings Bootcamp. So yeah, obviously this came out a while ago, but it was during Yearly Favourites Week and the one before that where I was preparing for it. And yeah, just had no time whatsoever to squeeze this review in and kind of get it done for all of you. Just had no time at all to do that, what with everything else going on. But yeah, I know that you guys wanted me to cover it, so here I am. I haven't heard any of the tunes yet, you know, commendably so, some of you will say. But if I did hear them, then it would prevent me from doing a live review, which is what I know that you all want. And yeah, just a good way, I think, here of working back towards the full schedule with the new year incoming, 2021. And yeah, just going to keep it, you know, 19 tunes to get through here, so quite a few. Going to be keeping it quite chill, otherwise I imagine that I will get tired very, very quickly. And yeah, as I mentioned, hearing all of it here for the first time, the whole thing, haven't heard one tune from it, and I'm excited to get into it. And yeah, let's get going. And first up here, we have Subtronics himself with Tractor Beam. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Very Subtronics feel to it so far. Yeah, I like that. Oh! Okay. Ooh. Some great sounds in that drop. I think it's quite fresh and electrifying almost, you know, without doing all that much. But that would be the drawback for me as well, you know, quite static, I feel, the main idea. Very subtronics that, that little windy sound kind of going up, going down. Yeah, definitely picked up a bit there in the second drop, just a bit more, just a bit more active, a bit more going on, and I like the the overall colour of it again, the freshness of the sound. I think is really good but yeah the main bulk of the ideas here just not really you know taking me aback or you know wowing me per se i think the color of it definitely uh, keeps it going and carries it in a way for now just feeling not not completely gripped by it i must say sonically quite captivating but yeah the ideas not really you know making me want to go back to them again and again but first tune there tractor beam really colorful and quite attention grabbing on the production front i think but yeah the idea is just not really you know taking me aback quite yet next up makura by akios okay Ooh. Ooh, okay always got a good idea up their sleeve i swear The drop, just a bit lacklustre for me, in my opinion, you know, especially considering what they can do usually. Definitely lively at points, but for the most part, yeah, the idea just dragging just a bit. Ooh, yeah! Bit more aggression here, a bit more forthright in the delivery, which is good. Okay, yeah, not bad. I mean, good bits of liveliness there, I think, in the heaviness. And also, the introduction is very catchy, you know, brings you right in really well. And when we get that again in the midsection moment. And also, I like the picking up of energy from the first drop to the second drop. Yeah, just felt a bit more aggressive, as I said, and forthright in the delivery. But yeah, for the most part, the 
focal points just without that spark or attention grabbing moment to kind of bring you back in again and again to that focal point, which is a bit of a shame. But then again, you know, I do think Akios have just put out so much music in the last kind of couple of months or so. Yeah, you know, not bad, not bad. After that, we have Poison Muffins by Sizzy, which should be fun. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Again here a thing of a rhythm background, a rhythm backdrop and just a pretty straightforward idea. Good aggression to it in the delivery again, quite forthright but I mean I feel like it's an idea that you know I've kind of heard before. I think just fine, like not that much to say if I'm being honest, not a lot to the idea, you know, one that I feel I've kind of heard before, doesn't do all that much and you know a couple of little nice colourful moments in the main melody and whatnot and I did like the way actually that it you know kind of wound the track down at the end, gradually uh, deconstructing it if you will but yeah I think that was pretty much the only thing of note for me. Again, yeah, just just fine. Okay, next up we have Malfunction by Al Ross. Okay, we ready? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Again here, just quite simple, quite straightforward. I like these bits a lot, you know, kind of subsuming you, putting you underwater. Quite an alien-like extraterrestrial feel just running through it as well. But yeah, that, that drop idea just... The focal point here, the drops, the main ideas just... I'm not like... I'm just not enthralled, you know, I've kind of... Again, I've just, I've heard it before and not a lot really getting me going or inventive about it, you know, making me want to go back to it again and again. So yeah, just for the most part, I think, you know, as I said, good flavor to it, good color and quite sprightly overall. But yeah, for the most part, the kind of, the main point of it, the focal point just, yeah, not particularly inspired. So yeah. Okay, then we have Wheel Up by Phonon and Mad Dubs. The first collaboration here could be good, let's check it out. Okay. Bit of an irregular beat going on again here. Didn't quite get into its full flow there, in my opinion. Didn't have a lot of flavor beneath it, kind of running through it, etched into it. Um, but yeah, still a cool idea. <laughs> I like that. I think I definitely like the idea more than the execution. Quite a nice mix, I think, of different influences on show here, but yeah, I don't know, just not quite getting the full feeling from it, I would say. Like, it's cool, it's jumpy, it's interesting and different as a mix of influences, as I said, but yeah, I don't know, there's something not quite really making me want to go back to it again and again. Just needs, you know, that few little extra moments just firing out at you, just grabbing your attention and keeping you locked in when, you know, the idea itself, I think, does just kind of lose its you know novelty factor as it goes on over the course of the track but a lot of good aspects to it uh, just yeah again the focal point not quite you know not really 
inspiring a lot of feeling and excitement in me, I wouldn't say. Okay, after that we have Dissatisfied by Leo Trix. Okay, yep, here we go. <laughs> Just again a bit straightforward, like a bit ordinary. Not really doing all that much with the ideas, if I'm being honest here. Yeah, I mean, just fine. Like, nothing really or particularly remarkable about it, I wouldn't say. You know, just okay. I mean, if there was anything about it, I think I like the vocal chopping aspect of it. Kind of dancing and cascading over the tune, but... Aside from that, genuinely not a lot that I can remember, I think. That whole muffled thing, making your sound a bit more quiet, a bit just muddy, just really doesn't work all that well. Main takeaway again being here that, yeah, the, for the most part it's just a bit ordinary, a bit a bit bland, a bit meh, just really not doing all that much, you know, not stuff that... I haven't heard before, again. Okay, next up, another collaboration from Chi and Subtronics, Point Breeze. Okay, well, there I go. Right instinct here, I think, but just not pushing quite far enough with the idea. You know, you can feel that it has potential just lying underneath that isn't being fully realised. And you know, it's a good collaboration, a good um, a good mix of styles that we're getting here. But you know, yeah, not quite, just not really pushing that far. Just needs a bit more flavour, a bit more spark, a bit more excitement to it. There's some good sounds in here, they mix together well. And again, the instinct is there, you know, there's a good foundation there for some good ideas. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it just feels like it's dragging a bit. I think you expect something a bit more emphatic from those two. It just felt a bit, a bit lacklustre again, just a bit. Like it was dragging along, just, you know, taking a while to really get going. I think that kind of tune, it could have had a second half, you know, just as much time following that where it could have really picked up, but you know, they probably didn't have a lot of time to put it together, but still, I mean, if you're gonna do it, I think you should go full pelt, full out, and I'm just not quite sure that that is a full and complete and accurate reflection of their combined styles, you know, as I said. Whilst we do get some good flows in there and some good moments, vocal samples, little touches and bits of flavour here and there. I'm just, you know, the idea, I can't even remember it. You know, was it an idea or did it just kind of trudge along? Some good promise here, but yeah, ultimately quite just a bit of a deflated feel to it for me. And uh, yeah, again, just just okay, just fine. Okay, after that we have Killjoy by Easy Baked, Molokai and Saka. A nice little triumvirate. Let's see if it is a good one. Oh! Oh! Yep, okay. Production's good, rounded, full, and yeah, that's what's kind of getting me going, you know, it sounds good. Cheeky little idea, knows what it's good for, doesn't do too much, doesn't go overboard. Losing its way just a little bit, I would say, at this point. I think the first half I preferred a bit more, just a bit more, um, a bit more direct, I think, with what it wanted to deliver. And then the second drop, I think, 
it just included a few too many sounds and yeah I just felt a little bit wayward not quite as uh not quite as, again, direct with what it wanted to do and felt a bit distracted in a way. But yeah, I like the production there. I think some of my favorite on the comp so far. Not too long, not too short, pretty much the right length. And as I said, you know, loses its way a bit, just a little bit in the second half, but the first half I think does lure you in well. So yeah, you know, not bad. Not bad. Then we have Killing Em by Abolation, someone who's put out a decent amount of good tunage last couple of years or so. So yeah, looking forward to it. Leg out. Slowly winding up here. Yeah, those sounds fucking hell. Good idea, I think, a good skeleton there, you know, a good foundation, but really, really needs some, you know, melodic flavor just driving it forward. Feels a bit empty and bereft of feeling, even though the ideas are quite cool and the sounds are quite cool. Short and snappy again to the point, here we go. Good dynamic here between the sounds we get, but yeah, I mean, just needs like, maybe it's a sub bass thing or just a bit of warmth beneath it, pushing it forward, a bit of melody weaved in because yeah, it just feels a bit, a bit bereft of feeling, a bit, you know, just a bit empty in a way, even though there are quite a lot of sounds on show, it just, yeah, just needs something else, just pushing it forward a bit more, you know? Again, here's some good, some not so good and Makes for a good tune, but which is lacking in quite an important way. After that, we have Swing by Smith. Okay, let's go. Mm. I really wish that that main sound was just a bit more fleshed out, a bit more at the forefront. Just wah, 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 you know, really, really grabbing your attention because at the moment feels just a little bit in the background, just a bit distant, but for the most part, really liking the vibe and the production overall, I think is good. And uh, just like that, last 20 seconds of the tune. I mean, yeah, again, short and simple, not doing all that much and everything that I've said already is uh, what I think of it overall because yeah, just not a lot going on here. It's so short that not much else really to comment on here if I'm being honest. So yeah, good color to it, good production. Um, yeah, I mean, can't really go much further beyond that. Moving on from there, we have On The Block by G Space and Cavemen. Yep, let's do it. Very nice introduction, really liking that. I'm on the block. Ooh. Yeah, I did like that one. I think it might be my favorite so far. The introduction was, I think, you know, right up there with my favorite sections on the whole thing so far. And then I just really like the way that the heaviness here that we get just kind of snaked through your mind and it was very wavy and wobbly and all of that. And yeah, I think it kind of encapsulates, you know, on reflection, the kind of first half that we've got here 
of the compilation, I think it reflects the quite chilled approach that it's going for overall. Definitely felt a little bit directionless at points, you know, wasn't quite sure where it was going, but I think for the most part it coheres well and the different sections kind of exist alongside one another really well, not feeling stressed or pressured in delivering too much and yeah, just a nice chilled vibe to it as I've said and yeah, probably my pick here so far from G Space and Cavemen on the block. Yeah. Moving on from there, we have Component 17 by Blank Space. Okay, let's go. Some more cheeky bleepy bloopy from Mr. Blank Space right here. That snare really is quite sharp, isn't it? Almost too much at the forefront, but I do appreciate the sharpness of it, you know, the freshness of it. Jumping up a little bit, got these little skips and jumps in it, which I think is quite clever. Yeah, again here, find myself appreciating the minimal uh, delivery and approach from Blank Space, which he's, you know, done quite a lot of before and it's worked and I think it works again here. Not quite as, you know, not, not really a lot here bringing you back in, not a lot to kind of get into, stuff that's catchy or memorable, but as an overall aesthetic and design, I think it's quite cheeky, quite inviting, quite playful, and yeah, I mean, not loads to comment on, if I'm being honest. There's a kind of composure in the construction here, which works for it as well, you know, quite drawn out, quite lengthy, not really wowing me in any way, but uh, yeah, just, just good, just solid, and I will leave that one at that. Okay, next up we have Foolish by Kill Feed. Yep, let's go. Is mean. Here we go again. Oof. Very, very short that one. I think that would have to be my main drawback here. You know, it doesn't feel that developed or, you know, just fleshed out fully. I think a lot of potential here. I'd be interested if he did a VIP of some sort going forward because the foundation is just fantastic, you know? Really liking the production, I like the ideas, I like the flavor of it, the energy, it just kind of, it keeps your attention really well. And that is, I think, the hallmark of a really good tune. And I think quite captivating in a way, even though, as I said, you know, not that much going on here, really very short. Definitely points here that drag just a bit in comparison to the more lively elements, but, those lively elements, I think, are really good, you know, really sharply cut and a lot of different moments kind of fighting for your attention as the listener and weaving their way into the available space, if you will. Some of the cutoff points felt a bit rushed and the transitioning into the new sections felt, yeah, just a bit hurried. But beyond that, I think a really good tune, well cut, flavoursome and yeah, just a lot of colour to it and incisive in the production, I would say. So yeah, I think again, another one of my picks here so far, Kill Feed with Foolish. After that, we have Waterweight by Control Freak and Van Fleet. Another potentially juicy collaboration here. Let's hear it. <laughs> Ooh. 
Really liking the energy of that one. Um, that, da -da 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 -da. yeah, really good. Liking that approach. The note placement here, just very on point, knowing both of them where to put the notes and how to, you know, grab the listener. Yeah, that one definitely injecting a much needed energy into the compilation overall. I think, yeah, again, the way it's cut, just very riveting stuff. And it wasn't just the heaviness, in my opinion. I really liked also the introduction, that kind of gloomy feel to it. And when it was brought back again in the midsection, I think it was. But yeah, I think overall, the centerpiece here, the focal point, the heaviness is just really well cut. And again, that thing of the note placement being so good. Times here where it just gets right under your skin and it really gets you going, you know, really propelling you forward and making you want to hear more. You know, a couple of moments here and there where you're kind of thinking maybe it's dragging a bit and feeling a bit lackluster in comparison, just a bit. Yeah, just not, not, not quite, you know, pulling its weight and doing its job within the context of the tune overall. That one from Control Freak and Van Fleet, what was it again? Water weight was uh, very solid and yeah, one of my picks here so far. Okay, five to go and first of those we have Death Wish by Calcium. Okay, let's do it. Not bad, not bad. Personally, I feel like for the most part that Calcium has kind of lost the fun of his sound quite a bit. This being another pretty good example for me, you know, quite formulaic, quite straightforward. Not a lot going on here in the heaviness and also beyond that, just quite screechy, quite overbearing in a way. Okay. Again here with his sound, that thing of not really feeling the fun of it, you know, quite straightforward, quite formulaic stuff that I feel like I've heard before and uh, yeah, just a bit screechy, a bit, a bit whiny, I would say, just that first drop in particular. I did like, I did enjoy how it picked up in the second half with something a bit beefier, just a bit more substance to it, but that first drop just felt so, yeah, almost kind of unbearable on the air, in my opinion. Not really getting that bouncing off the walls feel that I did with his stuff before. So, yeah, okay, but I wouldn't go further than that. Okay, next up, G Key OTM. Yup, let's do it. <laughs> It's good so far, I'm liking that. Sharply cut, good production, and a really good range of sounds on show. Had a period earlier on in the year where the production and the percussion in particular just wasn't that great, but here, sounding really, really tops. Oh. Yeah, 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 that's good, that is good. Nice, nice, 
nice. The ideas aren't the thing that I'm going to be going back to, but I think the ideas are good enough. You know, very solid, well cut, sharp, as I said, and it's just the production that really carries it through, you know. A lot of it is quite sharp, incisive, and it has the potential to be quite abrasive in a way, but, you know, all comes out and is uh, packaged in a really nice and full and colourful way as well, I would say, you know, quite fresh and just very, yeah, radiant in a way, I would say. At the very end of the compilation, I think we're getting some fire, and again, that would have to be another favourite so far on the comp. Cheeky. OTM. Next up, we have Gaussian Traveller by No Sphere. Let's do it. Ooh. Some good flavour in there, I think it's got a nice sprightly appeal to it. Uh, I think the production, the percussion in particular, just lacking a little bit, you know, not quite backing up what's on top completely. But I think the idea, yeah, you know, quite infectious in a way, quite fun, I like it. Yeah, all this stuff, brilliant. Love that. Just needs bad, bad. The insertion of vocal samples and just the transitioning from one sequence or section to another, I think is really good in that one as well. But yeah, just same or similar kind of thoughts as to what I had, you know, halfway through. The ideas and the sprightliness of it, I think really works and a kind of, kind of glacial feel to it with those synths kind of firing off everywhere and kind of trickling down. There could have been a bit more confidence with the idea in terms of where it was going and whatnot, you know, at times just being a bit more sure with the formulation of the idea as opposed to just, you know, having a load of sounds just blaring out and firing out from whatever direction. But yeah, I think, you know, Another one here where it's kind of equal parts good and not so good. So yeah, just just about decent, I would say. And ultimately, we have Satan Works Alone by Level Up. Quite a good title, I like it. Yeah, let's go. Oof. That snare. Mm. Oh, okay, um, over again before it gets going properly, you know. It was okay, I, I, I like the idea, but I think, yeah, I think really lacking in the production aspect of it, in my opinion. The transitioning from the builds to the drops felt a bit jarring to me. There wasn't a very organic and true or harmonious transition and bleeding into the heaviness that we got. It just felt a bit rough around the edges, a bit bare in the production sense of it. So yeah, in those focal points, not quite uh, elevating the track to a new height of any sorts. Decent ideas here from Level Up again. I like the energy of it, the liveliness of it, but yeah, just lacking in the production expertise, I would say. Yeah. And finally, we have the Screamsaver VIP from Subtronics, which I think is a nice little way to round up here. And that is what we are gonna do. Let's go. How's he gonna change it? How is he gonna change it? I don't know. Get out! Here we go! It must be done. Oh! Oi! 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 Yeah, 
clever. I like that. Target marked. Oi! 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 Yep. Yeah. Oh, so short. So short, man. I was waiting for the second half of that tune. Not gonna lie, that is a bit of a letdown because what we got was so good. I really like that. You know, keeping and adhering to the original, you know, the structure, the ideas and all of that. But yeah, just so short, man. It was going so well. I, you know, I understand that, you know, he's a very busy person. He's got to put this whole compilation together, get all the promo for it sorted, the trailers and the artwork and all of that, but if I'm being honest, I personally would have preferred if he had, you know, put out one less original here and just gone ham full out on that one and fully and properly developed it and just given it a second half and allowed that story to really tell itself as a big and grand finale and climax here to the compilation. I think it just would have rounded it off so well. You know, it is good. What I've said, you know, what I've said already, what we do get here is really good, but you do just want a bit more of that and for it to just push that little bit further because, you know, that's what he was doing. It was really going somewhere. Quite an emphatic way to end, you know, could have been a bit more, of course, but we do have to be grateful, I think, for what we do get here on the closer to Boot Camp, the debut compilation from the new Subtronics label, Cyclops Recordings. Just a couple of quick closing thoughts here. Um, yeah, I think for me, Boot Camp is a tale of a tale of two halves, I would have to say. The first half just feels a bit lackluster to me, like it takes a bit of a while to get going. Just most of the ideas feeling a bit just without that much excitement and life and flavor to them. Just, you know, dragging a bit and not really, not really exciting me. Not a lot of ideas there that I want to go back to again and again. I think of the first half tunes, the only one that would place in my favorites of the whole compilation would be the uh, collaboration between Easy Baked and Molokai and Saka. Excuse me. Opening 10 or so, I get what he's going for. I quite like the chilled and laid back approach for the most part, but the ideas just feel very straightforward, formulaic and simple. Not really bringing that much new to the table, the bass music table that is, and uh, yeah, just feeling a bit, a bit meh, a bit lifeless, if you get me. But then moving on, the second half is so much better. The liveliness of the ideas, the flavor, the color, it's just way more exciting and a lot of variety on show and the production far better as well. It's just way more engaging and yeah, I feel gripped by it. I'm not saying all of them, you know, there are a couple of duds here as well in the second half, which don't quite grab the attention in the same way, but still, you know, I think the second half overall far, far better. And the compilation overall just really comes into its own in that second half, like that nine or 10 that we get at the end in the second half. But yeah, for a first compilation for this label, I think quite good. I can see there is a theme and vibe running through it, you know, quite chilled at points and then others quite heavy, but always that glitchy and alien-like, almost extraterrestrial gleam running through it, which I think works for it overall. And for what it's worth, my picks here come from Easy Baked and Molokai and Saka as that little triumvirate that we got, and then G Space and Caveman. Kill Feed, Control Freak, and Van Fleet, Jeeky, and Subtronics. But yeah, there we have it, my live review of the new compilation, the debut compilation from the new label from Subtronics, Cyclops Recordings. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. What did you guys make of Boot Camp yourselves overall? Track by track, that kind of thing. Which tracks of the 19 are your picks? Let me know. Drop all of your views, thoughts, and opinions in the comments section down below. But beyond that, keep it naughty. If it's naughty, then you know. And I shall see all of you legends in the next one there will be a couple more vids before the year is up 2020 but yeah see you there peace